Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Jacobs, the Basket Master, and where you left me last time, I was busy tucking in all my stakes. So you can see they are all tucked in nicely now. Our very top row is our two rows of twining that we did, and everything was then tucked to the inside of the basket, and I was careful to make sure that my ends don't show even on the inside of my basket. So now it's time to begin with our braided rim. And to do that, we need 22 pieces of number three round reed cut at 22 inches long. So easy to remember, 22 at 22. The reason we need 22 pieces is because there were 22 stakes that I tucked into the inside and you need a piece of round reed for each and every stake. Now we have a decision to make as far as how we want the look of our rim to be. And I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna lower this. I'll show you that decision here in just a minute. But what we're going to do is you need, I'm gonna use an awl, but you need a small packing tool or a small flat blade screwdriver or something like that because you need to create a space. You need to get under those two pieces of twining that you did. And then you're going to insert your number three round reed. Now, what I could do is I could insert my other end at the next stake. I don't want to do that. I want a little different look to this basket. I'm going to take my awl, go under the next stake, and I've got a new piece of number three round reed that I'm going to insert in here. Then I'm going to go to the third stake, insert my awl. This is the end of the first piece. I'm going to insert it in there like so. And I'm going to pull up evenly on both of those pieces of round reed. And you see it's making a little loop we kind of got to decide how tight or loose we want that loop. I'm going to pull it up. You, you could leave it nice and loopy. There's going to be plenty of, of uh, reed for that. But I'm going to pull it up fairly tight so that it's at about this row of weaving. And now I need another piece of round reed. And I move to the next stake. I go back to here and I pull that. I've got my two ends now through and I pull them up nice and tight. There's as tight as I want them. With my awl still in place, I get another piece of round reed and insert the end in. Now you see this is going to create, see how it kind of creates a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Here's another example you can just have little scallops with each and every one. Or you could jump over three stakes if you wanted to. Uh, the, the choice is totally up to you. In this one, I just wanted to skip over one stake. Continue on around. So here we go around this corner. Insert this. Get my two ends and pull it up. And make sure that your reed has been soaked so it won't break on you. Insert my next piece. And you could, if you didn't have number three round reed on hand, you could use number two. It's all right. Here's the piece. Here's the opposite end. Get those two ends and pull them up. Can you see that okay? Stick a new piece in. this down in my lap. It'll just be a little easier here. 
I don't usually work right on top of the table. I usually work with the basket sitting in my lap. It's a little lower, a little easier for me to reach. Just take your time with this. Maybe I can pull the camera closer. You can see a little better. <laughs> How's that for a wobbly camera? <laughs> Don't you hate it when you're watching home videos and the cameraman's wobbly? <laughs> Sorry about that. really want to make sure that you can see. Something else that's not really very smart. I've got this pretty wine colored reed and I'm wearing a white shirt. I guess the only thing that's smart about that is that if I get a little bit of the the dye, if it comes off the reed and onto my shirt, at least I can Clorox it. Alright, I'm going to continue on around my basket. And I hope you're, I hope you're getting this, that each, each and every uh, stake, we're putting, we, we finish off one piece of reed, and pull it tight and we insert a new piece of reed so I'm going to continue on with this but I am going to try to make sure that all of my loops are the same height and as I've been pulling this up here as I've been pulling this up I'm also getting all of my ends at about the same height I don't have one that's really short and one that's really long I've been pulling them up evenly so that they're all approximately at the same height that may be kind of hard to tell because they're kind of wanting to bend around but they're, they're basically all at the same height. So I'll continue finishing around putting one piece of reed at every stake. All right. So I'll be back in a few minutes. See y'all later. Bye.